Are you ready to be scared to death? You joined us for Scary Larry's House of Universal Horrors. Now prepare yourself for Scary Larry's Pint of Horrors. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, as always, these guys swear like fucking sailors. Fuck yeah, we do. <laughs> a mouthful of Greek salad. Formulas, equations, a lot of fancy terms that don't mean a thing. Well, you're wondering where are those Piney Comics guys? Well, <laughs> if you... <laughs> John's, oh, John's, trying to, John's trying to hold in a laugh. We've, uh, uh, we've been talking about... I think about, that was me. We've been talking about nipple piercings for the last five uh. minutes and, uh, and uh, some of uh, Larry's <laughs> unfortunate accidents in his days of having his nipples pierced and, yeah. and other things. Uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> this is uh, this is a new brand new uh, series we're doing here. We've, that's, a, that's another horror story. We've just, yeah, yeah, that's that's real life horror. <laughs> that, that's, that, 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 there's not no zombies in this shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> there ain't no zombies when a, when a when a towel loop rips your dick in half. <laughs> you know, what? I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you people. Oh, oh, and this shit. by the way, this did not happen to Larry. I just want to put that out there, friend of mine, or yeah. any anyone at this table. Anybody at this table. Yeah. 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 yeah, if you ever plan on getting your penis uh, pierced, uh, be very careful with how you're drying off that's all i'm going to say imagine the rest of the story yourself yeah because that's what you need to worry about if you you see me you can ask me i'll tell you the story yeah if you see larry at any of the great connecticut called classics (laughs) events or ct horror fest uh or uh or if you just run into him anywhere at the shopping at at the shopping mall at at, uh, at his kids uh, i don't know daycare dental appointments yeah dental appointment ask him about ask him about the tale of his buddy uh and light the pen (laughs) His, his, the tale of Larry's buddy's pierced dick versus the towel. Yeah. And he'll tell you. I'll tell you all about it. He just told us. So this is our brand new uh, series here we're doing. We finished up the Universal uh, uh, House of Horrors with Larry, which was awesome. We talked about eight classic Universal horror movies. And now we are talking about Scary Larry's Pint of Horrors. And we are talking about today. You guys picked it. So if you went on to ConnecticutCallClassics.com and uh, you chose it, out of the four movies we had up there, Wicker Man 73... Wreck uh, from 2007. Uh, burnt why, offerings. Why do, why do we have to say that? Wicker Man 73. There is no other Wicker Man. Yes, there is. Well, no, there unfortunately, there, there is. No, there isn't. Unfortunately, there no, is. No, there isn't. <laughs> you guys chose us to talk about the 1985 uh, classic <laughs> Day of the Dead. Yes. George A. Romero. George Andrew. I looked that up. Can that we might... ask how many votes that had? Oh, I texted I you. It was, yeah, it was he, in the 60s? Yeah. It, it, wow. We got over 100 votes for everything in, uh, in Day of the Dead. In, in, in total. In, in total. total. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, which for, us, which for us is fine. We'll, we'll absolutely take that. Well, I remember seeing, like, uh, at one point, a count and, and Wicker Man and Day of the Dead were very close. Wicker Man, he, he was sending it to me. Wicker Man was ahead almost had the lead time. For, for most, most of, of, most of the yeah. voting. Yeah, you fine. keep talking. I'll find the <laughs> where I texted you the final we, One thing we do know is that Burnt Offerings had no chance. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, that was a real surprise. Like, even the very first time I saw the the tally and burnt offerings had two votes and yeah. I'm like what and so is was... this going to be like the hall of fame it's just going to fall off after so many uh, yeah after episodes. so many after so many episodes yeah, yeah. yeah. What, a, what a, it's a shame because that's a really fun movie it's a shame oh here we go <laughs> ain't that a shame uh, i got nothing i can't think of another shame song <laughs> so we're we're going to talk about the 85 uh, day of the dead thank you narragansett george a romero's uh third in his uh in his uh of the Dead trilogy. Now, funnily enough, the first movie is called Night of the Living Dead, and then the next two are called Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. Day. The reason they're not called Dawn of the Living Dead and Day of the Living Dead is that there was a whole there was a, a whole hullabaloo, hullabaloo <laughs> of rights issues yeah. uh, with I think Dan O'Bannon who uh, who ended up making Return of the Living Dead. Yep. So great Return movie. of the Living Dead, which is a great movie. Yep. He, Dan was, O'Bannon, he was George's co-writer right. on Night of the Living Dead. 
Um, and anybody who knows anything about licensing, they did not properly license the film at all, which is why it's still public right. domain. You can you can go show Night of the Living Dead at any fucking theater for no money <laughs> at any time you want. They could have they, they could have made a killing. Yeah, they fucked yeah, that. that they fucked that all up. Yeah. They but they didn't know they were right. kids making right. a making a movie with who their knew? friends. Yeah, live and um, learn in Pittsburgh. So PA. so O'Bannon, who was the co-writer, uh, retained the rights to The Living Dead. So he went on and said, "Okay, well, I'll make Return of the Living Dead." Dan O'Bannon, yep. who uh, had a long career before he passed away. One yep. of the writers of Alien. Yep. One of the guys behind Alien and a bunch of other things. But yeah. Extro. Was O'Bannon in the, had something to do with Extro? I, I, I think no so. Extro? No. Oh, oh, yeah. No, I think I think you're right. Yeah. Because he, he did a bunch of horror movies. Wait, yeah, is, this, is this one of those moments I, again where... No, I never heard of this. Okay, I feel good again. All right. Okay. We, we you haven't seen this one? No. Wow. Extro. Yeah. No. It's, like, it's like saying you haven't seen Q. Yeah, it's oh, I, you know that's funny. I would kind of <laughs> wait. Q, wait, hold on. What? Clue? What's a cool addle? Q, Q, Q with the dinosaurs. Yeah. Not the dinosaur, the flying fucking the, yeah, it's a we'll, serpent. Right. Never, never, really? never, never oh, seen come that. On. It's okay, so right. low budget. <laughs> all right. Here we go. I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> this is like going back to the episode where we had the other. Uh, you other... guys are singing Sandler over here, and <laughs> <laughs> we had the other gentleman from, uh, from. And for all that, Dan O'Bannon had nothing to do with Extra, but whatever. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was. It's still a fun movie. <laughs> yeah, but I do have the final tally. Final tally for the votes were: uh, Day of the Dead got seventy six, uh, Wicker Man fifty six, and like I said, Wicker Man was in the lead. Yeah. Until like the last week, I think. Huh. Uh, Wreck with thirty four. And burnt offerings with twelve. Wow! Right, well, hey. it, well, it broke the double wow. digits. Double digits. <laughs> yeah. So you wanted to hear about Day of the Dead. Uh, so this is uh, Scary Larry's uh, Pine of Horrors. Let's go right into it, Larry. You put twenty movies on the list. Yeah. Why did Day of the Dead end up on the list? Because it's one of my favorite movies. Uh, I love Day of the Dead. Um, one of the ones I saw in the theater with my dad. This wasn't a drive-in. I always always talk about movies I saw in the drive-in right. with my parents. This was an actual movie theater. Saw this one uh, in '85 at the Merritt Theater in Bridgeport, Connecticut, mm-hmm. which is no longer there. Unfortunately, it was on uh, Main Street. Anybody who knows Bridgeport, it's kind of where the CVS is now. Um, I also the, saw the Halloween. one CVS. Yeah, well, the one on Main Street, mid Main Street, <laughs> middle Main Street, I would call it, in between downtown and the mall. But it was a good theater. I saw a lot of stuff there. I saw Halloween three there. Um, saw Return of the yeah Return of the Jedi there. Uh, saw a bunch of stuff there. Um, so Day has always been a favorite. I love George Romero. I thought about putting Night of the Living Dead on this list, but it's. I mean, they're all talked about a lot. But night is talked about. Yeah, night. Is. Yeah, everyone. Talks so I was like, about "What? It, yeah. What new can you possibly say about night?" Um, I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's about it. <laughs> so I was like, "Let's throw dawn and day on there and 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 see what happens." And and the George Romero dead fans. Mm-hmm. This movie, when it came out, was not looked at kindly. Uh, it, it was it was kind of like the dawn fans looked at it as you know. Because really, I mean, we've talked about it before, and I'll say it right off the bat. I've I've said it. Out of the three, I love Night, I yeah. love Dawn, and I love Day. I prefer Day over the other two. Because for me, it is a better story with better character building. Now, again, yes. Are you is- sure about that? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, 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 and to back me up, Larry, yeah. who else chose this as his favorite of the three movies? Well, you've got a strong partner, uh, George Romero. George yes, Romero. This is his favorite of his uh, zombie films. Right. I also prefer when, this out of all three. When I when right. I asked him, when I interviewed him at Connecticut Horror Fest, yes. uh, I was actually very surprised because I didn't do any research as to what his answer was going to be. And I thought he would say dawn or night. I was very surprised he said day. If you go back on YouTube and watch it, I think when he says day of the dead, like I gave him a look, I was like, huh, mine's dawn. <laughs> <laughs> as if he gives a shit what my favorite is. <laughs> but... <laughs> Well, but you uh, said he was the kind of guy that actually might. Like you said, he, he was might. super nice, right? Su- sweetheart of a man. You guys talked to Sean him. Sean like, said he was really nice. Sean, yeah, yeah Sean. Yeah. Uh, Sean and was here. Very, but- very humble. It's to the. I mean, almost to the point of. I don't want to say weirdness, but like when he came into the hotel the night before, we were there to 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 greet him and make sure he got his room and everything like that. And me and Rob went up to him and introduced ourselves, and he goes, "Oh, hi, I'm George Romero." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. we're, no we're well aware, yeah. well aware of who you are, sir. Yeah. You know, just so unassuming. But you didn't hit him with like a no shit Sherlock. Did no, you? no, no. Okay. no. All right, all right. I, so I was blown away by his by his humility and also by how tall he was. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Big Christ! Dude, right? Oh yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, he's towering. He was, well, I'm only five nine, but yeah, I'd say he's. 
probably six three ish, oh, and wow. this was only a few months before he died. So hmm. you know, old people shrink. He might have even been taller. Yeah, <laughs> yep. back in the back in the day. And he, he was, was active right up until you know fair, fairly active. I mean, the, well, the he, last he wrote some comics for DC. He and, wrote some, yeah toe yep, tags, yep. and he did that Empire. He did that Empire of the Dead book for I think Marvel. Uh, which was coming out probably right. two years before he died. That was a good book. I read that. I didn't read that. It was Alex Malieve Art, which I, I do love <laughs> Alex Malieve Art. He's, he's, yeah. he's not, a, not a nice dude. but um, <laughs> That's what I heard. Uh, yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, wink, nudge, 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 nudge. <laughs> but like, he, he had made, uh, you know, so yeah, you have the, what you consider the trilogy, and these are the ones that everybody kind of goes for. Yep. But then he also had another trilogy that came after. He had Land of the Dead. Yep. Diary of the Dead, and that was as far as I saw. And survival. Um, survival of the Dead, but Survival yeah. of the Dead was only like eight or nine years ago. So, I mean, he was yeah. still <clears throat> pretty active. It wasn't like this guy hadn't made a movie in 20 years. Right, but those are all bad. Um, <laughs> uh, how, <laughs> however, Sean, who you just mentioned, will argue for Land of the Dead till, till he's blue in the face. He loves Land I, of the Dead. I enjoy Land of the Dead myself. He as well? Yeah. yeah I Is that it. the one with John Leguizamo? Yes. John Leguizamo. Yeah. I like that. The and guy Dave? who played yeah. uh, the... Um, uh, oh, the mentalist. I don't know what his name is. He was the mentalist on CBS. Oh, that, don't yeah. forget Dennis Hopper. Dennis yeah, Hopper. Hopper. Well, and, a- and my girl, uh, Asia Argento. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Right. I got fan. really weird feelings about her. Yeah, big fan. Yeah. Why, why do you have weird feelings? Because she's super hot and... and Confusing feelings? I'm confused because she's the one Because you're that, too old for her? Well, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> actually, no, she's in her... She's in her. She's older than me, actually. No, yeah, but, but she no. likes the younger guy. But that, that's, oh, what, that's where my confusion <laughs> comes Except from. Except Anthony Bourdain wasn't younger. Yeah. No, no. Mm-hmm. That's where my confusion arises, is the fact that she's... you know, And again, hey, if something happened with her and Weinstein... She's the one that kind of like blew the whistle, and then she's like True. molesting yeah. a fucking kid at the right. same time. Right. Yeah. But she, you know, again, I, I have weird feelings on that. Is Whatever. it really? Is it really yeah. molestation if you're like an 18 year old kid in Asia Argento wants to sit on your penis? <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused by everything. Oh. So let's move into Day of the Dead. Sure. Uh, Larry, give us the give us the plot. What is what is Day of the Dead all about? So Day of the Dead, uh, you know, George Romero's Dead series always always looks at something, right? Uh, Night of the Living Dead, they said, looked at race relations. Dawn of the Dead was commercialism, obviously, with right. the mall. And Day of the Dead was military. You know, let's take a look at the military and what would happen if there was a breakdown of society and you've got a bunker, small bunker full of people. How could they coexist? Right. Uh, so that's that's what you have here. You know, you've got um, some science people who are scanning the coast looking for other possible survivors, you know, in a great, great opening scene. It is a fantastic yeah, opening scene. I agree. When they land the plane... <laughs> Uh, in Florida. No, no, it's not. It's Do you not mean the dream scene? No, or? you're talking about the dream. You know, that's the opening scene. That's right. The well, dream. well, I was, I was just gonna say, it's, it's not a plane. It's a helicopter. That's but true. More importantly, it's a whirly bird. It's, it's a whirly bird. bird. <laughs> yeah, but you're probably right, the, one of the, the worst opening, Jamaican right. accents I have ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I will get into that in a moment. Yeah. We, 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 the, we the opening scene is we actually people the, on WESU that sound better yeah. than that. And actually, they the the dream sequence where she's marking off the the date, the calendar, and the hands come through the walls. Uh, and I good jump scare yeah i think that yeah. gets everybody the first. she had two she had two great jump yeah, scares yeah. in that movie yeah, yeah. Uh, one that started one the, that ended i think yeah, it's a, it's I a think good wrap to the to the yeah. whole thing with that, that initial mm-hmm. jump scare of her marking off the calendar and the arms coming through yeah everything about that is great except for her reaction is so corny so the way she planned. turns yeah and, yeah like just stands <laughs> it, it, it yeah. works because it's a classic movie and you get past that right but it's like it, how much better would it have been if she just like like you know like dove to the ground or right. you know it, instead she just kind of turns and freezes it's, like yeah it doesn't but again look it's like a dream real, sequence it yeah. doesn't look real but it doesn't look like a real reaction uh, but then you're in the whirly bird <laughs> Well, they right? bud. <laughs> with her and uh, and the the Jamaican, John, yeah, and John the, Torres, yeah. I think, and the Englishman uh, who drinks quite a bit, yeah, yeah, quite boy. A bit. yeah, yeah. When he, uh, when he fit, throws away his flask at one point, in, he I would was fit so in mad. on this fucking podcast perfectly. He would <laughs> yeah. fit in on this podcast. Just when, see if you should get that. Guy. When he threw his flask away at the end, <laughs> yeah. I actually said, "Man, John's gonna be pissed." At this guy. I, was, <laughs> I was so pissed. I was like, "No, you Keep saved that. that. <laughs> yeah. You can refill that later. You can yeah. refill that. Either that, or you use it as a weapon if you." need to <laughs> so they're they're looking for survivors they land uh in florida you can tell it's florida because a fucking alligator comes out of a building <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right and the horrible um, palm trees everywhere right <laughs> uh you get the you get the awesome scene of the the money blowing around in the streets yeah um, it's all dollar bills all singles it's yeah. all singles yeah <laughs> all singles probably from the crew from the strip bar the night before <laughs> Um, and then the great, uh, the newspaper that, that, that blows and sticks there so you can read the dead walk, 
uh, which I actually have a pillow of at home. I got a pillow that? That, that has that newspaper on. I was it. reading. Uh, I was reading about the movie um, uh, after we had watched it. Uh, I'd seen it last year as well. The recently watched it. The extras in the movie who um, who played the zombies yep. were, were paid thusly. They were given a thusly. dollar. They were given a hat or a shirt that said, I played a zombie in Day of the Dead. Yeah. <laughs> and they were given a copy of that actual newspaper. Yeah, yeah. I've read yeah, that before. That's pretty cool. They yeah. had to chase the dollar. I read that. Yeah, they that's had to right. chase the dollar. They had to chase it down. around. Yeah. Um, and then you've got, you, they, they, show you, they show you right away where the money of the film went when you see the first uh, you know, real zombie. You see a couple zombies walking around, but then when you see Dr. Tongue come up to the camera and you see just what a great job. Makeup wise, yeah, they did there, and you're like, wow, this is uh, the 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 makeup's going to be a little bit. That better one than scene is dead. so great. Yeah, yeah. he opens yeah. his mouth so the slowly, just slides down his. Uh, yeah, my, my my first thought with that was like, how does he eat? Because he's missing, <laughs> he's missing a lower jaw. He's well, just like it's right. jam it up against his upper molars. You know, maybe he just maybe he just rips it off and shoves it down. There. Yeah. It's just instinct, man. Yeah. It's just instinct. Yeah. So, so yeah. Accor- according to what we learned in the film, Dawn, Dawn of the Dead is kind of uh, even amongst fans, I would say, the nefarious for the blue zombies. Yeah, yeah. Right? The the way you know if someone's a zombie in Dawn of the Dead, which was made in like nineteen seventy seven or seventy eight. Yeah. Uh, is that they're painted blue? Yeah, and yeah, there's some gore on them and everything. This one here, there's still the blue element to it, but it's it's next level. Uh, yeah. You even you even yeah, get some next gen you even zombies. get some in Dawn whose faces are blue, but their hands are still normal. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. get some. You get some. <laughs> so they really, I mean, they really had a low budget to work with in Dawn as far as makeup. Yeah, you know, no doubt. And and, and this one here retains Tom Savini, who mm-hmm. is you know. Who, did Friday Thirteenth the original? I think he did the fourth one. Yeah. Uh, this guy's been around. He, he's he was he's an actor as well. Yep. Stuntman. Um, Stuntman. <laughs> excuse me. He's done a million things, and he he actually uh, I'm going to refer to this a couple times. So if you go out and get the Shout Factory Blu-ray DVD uh, mm-hmm. of Day of the Dead, which is what I own, there is an awesome hour and twenty five minute long documentary called uh, The World's End. And it's all about the making of Day of the Dead. So okay. a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of throw in there, I got from that. Tom Savini himself says this is his pinnacle of what he did in his career. He oh, considers wow, okay. this to be Day of the Dead to be the best he's done in well, his he, in his field. He did some great makeups and great work that was that is copied, copied yeah. and intentionally copied as well. I don't know, you know, I don't <laughs> know how how far you guys got on The Walking Dead, but they did some. Like, you know, the scene in Day of the Dead where the zombie rolls over and all the guts fall out? The gut fall, yeah. Greg Nicotero, as a toast to, who's actually in the movie. Who's Greg in the Nicotero, movie, yeah. Who, as a toast to Savini, did that in, in The Walking Dead yeah. as well. That uh, is one of the two scenes that is so memorable to me, mm-hmm. because I saw it basically the opening weekend, too. Yeah, yeah, you saw it in the theaters, yeah. Because yeah. we talked about this yeah. on the Stranger Things episode, because yeah. to tie into that episode, this is the movie... Right. In episode one yeah. of season three of Stranger Things, the kids go to sea. Yep. Because this was summer of 85. Yep. Yeah, so I, I went with my cousin, uh, Scott, to go see this movie. And then when that movie got out, we snuck right into Back to the Future. So, <laughs> there you go. That's, <laughs> it was almost back. like you were at the Star Court Mall. Yep. All right. So it's you know like what? We'll, we'll, we'll jump back into uh, into uh, into the, the plot of the movie with Larry in a minute. But I do want to go over, we'll, we'll do some cast stuff, and uh, we'll talk about it. So this movie came out on July 19th, 1985. It was filmed between October 22nd, 84, and January 16th of 85, written and directed by George A. Romero. Yep. The budget on this movie was $3.5 million. Uh, it ended up making $5 million. So this was actually uh, this actually made money. Yep. It was released in very few theaters, though. But the budget of this movie originally, and this is all from the documentary, was going to be, I think, $8 million bucks In the late 70s after dawn... Romero went to a financier, and and this guy was a, a producer, and he said, "I want to give you a three picture deal, but one of those pictures has to be the third in the in the the Dead trilogy." Yeah. So Romero wasn't sure how he was going to do it. He said, "Sure." He was given a cachet of money to use on all three movies. He ends up making Night Riders, <laughs> the uh, the the Ed Harris. I've never seen that. But oh, like, it's a fucking mess. The 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 jousting yeah. motorcycle guys, yep. right? I think Tom Savini Tom plays the bad it. guy in it. Oh, Ed Harris is in it. Yeah, that that was Romero. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. He makes that. Stephen movie. King is in it. Stephen King's in that. Really? Yep. That's a, that's a. Yeah, yeah, it's a bad movie. Uh, it's a yeah. I haven't, I haven't. The only autographed picture I have of Tom Savini 
is of Savini in Night Rider. Rider. <laughs> because when I met him in like 1989 or so, I, and he's got all the eight by tens, I was like, I cannot believe you have an eight by ten of Night Riders on your table. You will sign this for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have it framed and hanging up in my basement because fucking Night Riders, yeah. so bizarre. I've yeah. never seen it. It's bizarre. Yeah. So he ends up spending <laughs> spending money on Night Riders. The next movie he makes is Creep Show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he spends more money on Creep Show because that's like five movies in one, basically. And then in, in 84 or 85, when he, when they go to film this, he's only got so much money left. Oh. And part of the deal was, this financier said, was that I'll give you more money to make this movie, but it can't be unrated. He initially wanted it to be unrated. Yep. He said, if, if I'm giving you the money, it's got to have a rating to it. So he ended up making the, fir- the two movies first, and he said that if he had done it reversed... The, a lot of the money could have gone towards so if he made uh, day in like 81 yeah he could have put more money towards it but he mm. did the first two movies first uh he said night riders didn't do shit yeah creep show was a moderate hit at yep. the time and by then the money was almost all gone for day originally the script for day you know now this movie takes place almost entirely underground yep um the original script he said had a lot more florida outside action and a large chunk of the script of day ended up becoming the bulk of land of the dead Makes yeah. sense. So okay. Land of the Dead, right. actually, like the, yeah. the Dead Reckoning, the the, the the truck and everything, yeah. a lot of that stuff was ideas that were put into the original screenplay of Day of the Dead that he couldn't make because he had spent money. He said if, if, if they could have done it now, if he had uh, hindsight, he would have made Day of the Dead first. He could so have he made the, the, money. the bigger movie. But he said he didn't really care because he, he thinks that he made the movie he just, wanted to make. Just imagine Knight Riders with a oh. smaller budget. <laughs> oh, well, he might have had seven years to say, I'm not making this movie either. Yeah, well, no. on the other hand, if, if Day of the Dead made that much money on a, on a limited release schedule, imagine what it would have made on a, on a larger release schedule. Right. So he probably would have had <laughs> more money to play with. So Who All knows? right. So here's our cast for uh, for Day of the Dead. we got Lori Cardiel. She plays Sarah. Yep. Uh, her her most notable thing, uh, she really... Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead. <laughs> yeah. uh, her father <laughs> played one of the reporters in Night of the Living Dead, and he was a Pittsburgh-area Elvira-type host. A, oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I can't remember. I didn't write the name down of that gentleman, but uh, his name was something... Uh, Billy Cardiel, I believe. And he was a, like a supporter early on of, of Night of the Living Dead. He, mm. he, he put him in the movie, um, and he found out his daughter was an actor. She was a theater actor, and he used her. Terry Alexander... Okay, plays John, the Whirly Bird Pirate, uh, pilot. <laughs> what I want to say about Terry pirate, Alexander yeah. is exactly what I said to my wife when I was watching this movie the other night. No fooling, man. <laughs> Every time I watch Day of the Dead, yeah. I cannot determine whether he's doing the best no, Jamaican the accent worst. or the it's worst the Jamaican worst. accent. Yeah. It's the worst. Dude, is he, it the worst? I, I kind of liked it. I, I, there's a part of me that goes, As oh, a character, he's right. one of my favorite in the movie. Oh, it's God. Right? It's, it's yeah. like you might as well watch the 7 Up commercial. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Never had it. It's not Never that bad. bad. Oh, it's not that, that guy. Bad. That was that guy's real accent too. So. <laughs> uh, in the documentary, uh, the, no, no, it was not. He, no, 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 not not that. I mean, yeah, seven seven up. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in, in the documentary, the uh, the actor uh, uh, Terry Alexander. Um, says that the only way people ever believe that he was in the movie is like, when he does the fake accent. He, accent. Oh, yeah. 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 he said, "This is me, man." And they're like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> It's me, man. Uh, uh, third listed is uh, man. This guy is so over the top, but so good at the same time. Joseph Pilato, fucking amazing. Yeah, playing Rhodes. Uh, he passed away in March of this year. Really? Oh, yep. didn't he? Oh, what a shame. Seventy years old. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Joseph Sweetheart Pilato, heart. Really? Of a guy, which is funny because I mean he's just a <coughs> fucking giant. Best. Hair. I never met him, but I, but people I know that have met him said he is the nicest, nicest guy, guy yeah. with, with the fans and everything like that. Rhodes is the uh, is the captain in charge of the military installation that we spend our, our time in. He's got the best hair. He's got great, yeah, hair. He's got great hair. He's and got great hair. I, as I watch this movie and and now you know watching so it with 80s. different mind <laughs> uh, aspect of, of us doing all these, he goes into the Claude Rains Invisible Man dickhead character Ugh. in a horror movie Hall of Fame. Yeah, um, you know what though. I watched it this time trying to be more on his side. No, I I, I, I see his point too. I, I totally didn't think he was a dick. Uh, no, he's a dick. No, he's a total dick. He's well, a dick. But, totally. But, is. but a lot of his a lot of his like getting frustrated with like why are we teaching them to fucking use the exactly. phone? Exactly. Yeah. He had a totally legit no, reason. He uh, has reasons. Well, he th- th- let's let's not get into that until I can start picking this movie apart okay. because <laughs> right. I'm gonna be the lone guy here pulling this movie to pieces because Hulk. Can I can I scream? Oh yeah. Can Uh-oh. I scream my favorite line first though? Uh, yeah, just sure. Back go away right ahead. Like back away. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> I gotta hear this. <laughs> I'm 
running this monkey farm yeah. now, Frankenstein. <laughs> and I want to know what the fuck you're doing with my time. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love it. Yeah, that's like yeah, one of my favorite quotes of the whole movie. I mean, honestly, if if he was that angry the whole time, he would have been dead long before oh, that. He would have I mean, stroked that so early. Oh, well, but they also they also make like, it how clear. do you get your hair that perfect and still be that angry? <laughs> like, Look at your hair. You shouldn't be that. <laughs> He's like the Steve of uh, 1985. Yeah. <laughs> they also make they also make it very clear though. That uh, well, Steve is the Steve of 1985. Yeah. So. <laughs> true, true, uh, touche. Uh, they also make it very clear though that the guy who was actually in charge died that morning. Yeah, yeah. So, Cooper. So, so Steele may have been reserved under his, under his, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it, his, his, uh, his lead, his lead, and now within like this, he's been waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah, but he already had the bandolier. Yes, well, he's everybody has a bandolier. Uh, as we're going through the cast list of this movie, I do want to bring something up too. So you've got uh, you've got uh, Rhodes who's in charge, and then you've got two or three guys uh, underneath him that are uh, like have personalities, and then two or three guys that are just like cannon just fodder, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Right. But but so these guys are all you know very sexist and very racist. I wanted to ask this straight up, yeah. very quickly. I, I wrote this as a note, and I don't. I again to the listeners, please just go along with me here. But, like, they keep on referring to Miguel, who's Puerto Rican, as that yellow, yellow bastard. bastard. Yellow bastard. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, I, they're I calling him yellow because he's... he's I took they it think, as cowardly. Yeah, as cowardly. Okay. Yeah. That's how I All right. I, yeah. That's what the yellow was for. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I kept thinking... It's, okay, it's got nothing to do He's with not his, Asian. Yeah. And I, you know, right. I don't want to go that way, but I'm like, yeah. dude, are they not, like... No, he... Okay. Yeah, he's, yellow he's already fading out. He's He's not... He's he's stressed beyond belief. Right. He's obviously not wanting to be there. And of course, we don't get a lot of that. We just get everyone saying it, right? Rather than okay. Like, All right. All speaking right. No, speaking I don't, I don't, of Miguel, did you? <clears throat> I saw the relationship as a very unlikely match for those two. Well, yeah, it was weird. Well, right? I mean, I mean, besides the fact that she's fairly attractive and he looks like. Oh God! There's a uh, a, a character actor I'm trying to think of here, and well, let, let's get to he, he looks like Ron Palillo. For well, yeah, let, let, I mean, <laughs> let's let's get to Miguel in a second because I actually have Ron Palillo there. with a goatee. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jarleth Conroy uh, plays McDermott, who is uh, basically the Brett to uh, to Terry Billy Alexander's uh, Parker. <laughs> he's uh, Billy Boy. Yeah, he's he's the uh, I guess I don't know. Is he like maintenance guy? He's 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 the electronics radio operator, guy. Electronics guy. Yeah. He's the guy that throws out the, the flash that Sir John would never throw out. <laughs> Anthony DeLeo Jr. Uh, plays Miguel. Miguel, who they constantly infer is banging Sarah, is also the most effeminate guy on the base yeah. in every way, shape, and form. And as a matter of fact, in that documentary again, George Romero is talking about how they were like lifelong friends. Mm-hmm. And he said that like one of the things he loved in the performance is that – and he kind of stops and he, he, he says, he's so effete. And uh. – does he say that? He, uh, what the in, fuck in, does a feet mean? A feet is a like feminine. feminine. Is it yeah. okay? All right. Um, because, it's a French word. Because okay. this guy really, I mean, he's he, he's so he here's a soldier. He's fucking annoying. As he's annoying is. as shit. He's yeah. so they're, whiny. They're all annoying. He, he made me look like a fucking <laughs> asshole out there. Right. Yeah. Shut yeah. up. I love that line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Aw. <laughs> fucking Sarah, you have it so easy. You made me look like a fucking asshole. He's like, <laughs> 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 like a fucking he, asshole out there. He slaps her and then he hugs her like three times and hugs her. I'm surprised she didn't just like. Nut punch him. Yeah. She, she's a ballsy chick. Dude, so. the, the <laughs> scene where he he kind of has his like his last breakdown and she kicks him out of the fucking room right, sharing yeah. is fucking hilarious. Yeah, he yeah. like grabs his M sixteen and he goes. Yeah. <laughs> so so Miguel is 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 a guy who uh, is on the squad. He's one of the military guys, but he is like completely suffering a breakdown. Yeah. He is like the one guy who's like not holding it together, which makes you know listen. Total well, sense. Not going to be suffering a breakdown. Someone's going to be right. Yeah, yeah, if, stressed if you're, out. If you're thriving in this, then there's something wrong with you. Yeah. yeah well, right. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, that's Miguel. Uh, Richard Liberty, this guy is fucking awesome. This is uh, Dr. Logan slash Frankenstein. Oh, so <laughs> yeah. good. This guy has, has got a delivery unlike... Is there food? <laughs> oh, <laughs> he yeah. reminded I me... Said, is there food? <laughs> Just a little bit of, of uh, Dr. Blair, Will, William Bridge. Oh, uh, Wilford Brimley. R- Wilford Brimley from uh, uh, The Thing. He, just a little bit. He reminds me more of like just like this, like, yeah, he's crazy. He's absolutely crazy. Like, like I, I'm watching the yeah. movie again. We talk about this all the time whenever I'm watching a movie. Lindsay doesn't watch it with me, but she's just like looking up. And at one point, she's like, do they not have a laundry here? And I'm like, why? She's like, he's covered in blood. <laughs> yeah. And oh, like, yeah. He was disgusting. I'm like, yeah, he's he's like a mad scientist. He is he's balls like, deep in that he's blood. balls yeah. deep in blood. And then he goes to dinner in full yeah. oh, blood. Oh, co- covered in blood the whole time. <laughs> covered in blood. He, he reminds me a lot of John Billingsley, the actor. 
John, John Billingsley. Billingsley. Go ahead. All right. Uh, probably. I know the name. He's been in a ton of things. Oh, a lot of Star Trek uh, uh, Enterprise. Enterprise. The doctor, he Fox. was he was the alien doctor, but he's been in a, a shit ton of yeah. uh, crime TV where he's a he plays a serial killer. He's almost always the serial yeah, killer. Right. He's got this creepy way of of enunciating things and this actor you're right yeah sounds yeah. a lot like him mm. and uh, and richard liberty uh, by the way uh, passed away in 2000 oh. really so uh. he, died, he died quite a long time ago uh, and he's so good with his delivery and he he owns roads I mean, he could say especially anything, at, especially at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, in the, yeah. yeah because in the no beginning, one, no right, one knows right. what the hell he's doing. I mean, there's there's this big mystery. They're they're, they're kind of as crazy as Rhodes is. They're hoping that this guy is actually figuring yeah. something the fuck out that's going to help yeah. them. Yeah, I think. Surprise! Well, you get the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, until they realize what he's figuring out. Yeah. You you get the feeling in this movie that that I'm feeding your friends to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is this? <laughs> But I love when he comes out and and Rhodes goes on and on. You got you guys are toast. You're done. He's like, where are you gonna go? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Well, you yeah. can't go anywhere. Well, I mean, he comes in and, and gives you. You the, need us. He yeah. gives you the absolute. Uh, so once again, is there food? Yeah, <laughs> right. He gives you the absolute end of the yeah. of the of, of what it is. He tells you what it's like. We're four hundred thousand to one now. Yeah, four hundred thousand. By my calculations, four hundred thousand zombies to one person. Yeah, where are That's you gonna crazy. go? You, right. Where what are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to do so, nothing. So let's bring him in here with us. Yeah. Yeah, that was really smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, saying there's any plot holes in this movie or anything. Oh, <laughs> fucking stop it. More, all right. More all, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, uh, so next up is, is the actor. Now, this is interesting. This is very interesting. The actor who played Bub. Bub. Ah, Sherman. This is a guy named Sherman Howard. Yep. Howard but Sherman. But who was billed as Howard, Howard Sherman, Sherman at yeah. one point in his career. Yeah. Uh, let's, Bub, call, let's call him the smart zombie. Yeah, Bub is the sure. smart zombie that kind of starts off because we we get that through Land of the Dead and, yep. and we kind of start moving on in the, the, the smart zombie area. But here's where I find the uh, John. You'll you'll understand this. Sherman Howard was in the documentary that I was watching. Isn't and he's it? wait a minute. It was Howard, not, not Sherman Helmsley. No, no, no. no. Totally different person. No, you're not going to know him by name. Okay, but I'll tell uh, you where you're going to know I, him. I, so as I'm watching the documentary, and obviously he's older, he's not wearing zombie, I'm like, I know this guy's voice, and I know this guy from somewhere. And it keeps hitting me that I think it's Seinfeld. It is Seinfeld. This guy, in season three of Seinfeld, played Elaine's boyfriend, who was in, the artist who's in the hospital bed. Yes. Yes, with the Junior oh, Mints. It's the Junior Mints the episode. Junior Mints. That's him. Okay. That's him. When you, If you watch the documentary and you're <laughs> able to see him, uh-huh. the voice immediately, and I'm like, I know this guy, I know, and he played Roy who is Elaine's boyfriend who was uh, previously heavy. He lost weight when yeah, he got sick. She yeah. got interested in him again. George bought all of his triangle paintings. So he yeah, thought he was going to yeah, die. Yeah. And this is the guy who played Bub. Uh, he played Bub in is, Night of the Living Dead. I'm Day not I'm admittedly not huge. I mean, I love Seinfeld, but I've definitely never seen all of them. Is that the one where Kramer drops the jun- junior Junior Mint yeah. the guy being yeah, operated yeah, on. The operation yeah, is that, theater. Is that, is that why you weren't getting my They're pen so reference earlier? Uh, <laughs> probably, yeah. yeah I don't know. So and right's upside right. down, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> the astronaut pen. Uh, okay, so we'll finish this off with uh, Gary Howard Clark. Gary Clark from Bridgeport played Steele, who is the uh, second in command at this point. Yep, he is. Uh, he is a real macho nightmare dude. Yeah, uh, he probably listens. You to almost it. killed fuckhead. Whatever his name <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah, this guy Rickles. Is, uh, Rickles. You, you almost, almost killed, killed Rickles. Rickles. And yeah, uh, yeah he, he's got what he's got. He's got the biggest piece of meat in the whole oh, no. <laughs> cave. Yeah, <laughs> this guy generally, if he was a real person in today's day and age, would be at a Kid Rock concert ninety percent of his life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, well, you saw my post the other day. He was too busy not letting Josh Baskin on the ride and Big. That was the same guy. You didn't see that post? No. Yeah, the, the dude who wouldn't let Josh, little Josh, on the 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 roller coaster, not the roller coaster, but the merry-go-round, which right. made him that go, was steel. That was that was oh, private man. steel. Okay, oh, I'm kidding. Yeah. Oh, now do you, have, cool. do you have some inside info because you're the, oh, you're the horror I got, guy. I got plenty of inside info on Gary Clark. <laughs> I got. Uh, I got loads of inside info. You want inside info? You want to go right there? Give us some inside baseball. Gary Clark was uh, one of the first guests at the very first year of Connecticut Horror Fest. Sweet guy. Real, real nice guy. Ex-NFL player. Played for, I believe, the Redskins. Uh, one season, got injured. Hmm. Oh, uh, cool. hell, hell of a college football player. You could see that from, from the movie. He's a big yeah. dude. He's a, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. a big dude even still. Even oh, still, yeah. he's a big dude. Um, but again, real nice guy. Told Robin Christine the story about how he was adopted and ended up having a relationship with and sex with his real sister oh. and oh. not knowing it because he was adopted. Oh. That's the inside scoop. And uh, I'm not dropping anything that's not out there. 
he he broke this all on 2020. You can go watch it on YouTube. Oh, man. There's like a whole 2020 episode where he's talk. He's there with his what is what is his actual family that he never knew. Turned out his his real brother lived down the street and was his best friend and what he didn't know what are the odds wow. of this he didn't know it was his Holy brother crap. until they were in like the I, 30s like, i guess this is the important question yeah did he continue no <laughs> right he was already done they, they had been like a like yeah. a couple like in high school and then like didn't he they didn't find That's out until up. like 20 years you later. have never the, you don't know That's shit about awkward weird, thanksgiving right yeah. <laughs> until you're like 20 years after banging your sister yep. Whoa. you're yep. sharing the turkey with her yep and that ain't a euphemism now listen <laughs> don't <laughs> share the turkey. don't you go judging gary clark oh no, no no man <laughs> oh man My gary God. uh gary's wow. a sweetheart of a man who <laughs> found himself in a very odd situation yeah. <laughs> Wow, yep. you know it's it's almost it's not even like you, you at that point you can't be like oh that's gross yeah because maybe. that could happen it's more of a mathematical fucking like yeah. how like how the fuck did that how happen? the fuck did that I mean I'm sure there have been stories in the past of that sure. happening but my god that is crazy yeah yeah and like I said he was best friends with his brother who just happened to live down the street that's he had no weird. idea so strange wow Man. no idea that that was uh, that was his brother he did a, he did a few things he was in trading places at least uh, he didn't fuck his brother. <laughs> <laughs> there would have been no problem if he did the manster right yeah exactly yeah. we're okay with that if he did though no i'm okay yeah. with that oh you know he had a yeah, okay he, here here was i always forget this this was one of his i mean obviously day of the dead was probably his biggest role with his most screen time but he had a lot of screen time also as mario in quick change with uh randy quaid oh bill murray bill murray gina and davis. gina davis mario oh, was the guy that came to collect that was actually in love with mrs whatever like the guy i have not seen that in a long uh, time uh, yeah i saw it not long ago no, yeah. i'm trying to remember he had a, he's, he's got a pretty big uh big role he plays like an italian gangster okay yeah. Yeah. I, I vaguely recall that but Mar- that's, that's bridgeport's gary clark crazy for you. crazy movie wow. quick change wow yeah, quick, yeah. Quick change is a little weird, yeah. but it's got Jason Robards. I'll watch yeah. anything with Jason Robards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the last very, person, very, <laughs> very dry or Jason Robards in that movie. Yeah. The last person <laughs> I'll mention for cast, just because uh, we kind of talked about him before and, and he's known, is uh, Greg Nicotero. Yep. played Johnson, who's one of the nameless soldiers. He's the one who he's one of the two that uh, that when uh, is they, he got, is he's the is he the one with the beard, the blonde bearded yes, guy? Yeah, yeah. Is he the shot. head at the end on the table? Uh, he's the head on the table. At the end. Oh, that, okay. that's who that I, that's, I meant. I was going to ask you guys that because I I couldn't quite catch it when I was yeah. half asleep watching the movie. His, <laughs> his buddy gets bit in the neck, and when yeah. he gets bit, he just starts firing. He starts his firing. Okay, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kills, kills Ca- catches him in the chest, and uh, so uh, Greg Nicotero is uh, is a special effects wizard. Uh, mm-hmm. This guy is, he's actually, he directs a lot of The Walking Dead. He, yep. he got, he originally started. Executive producer. Executive producer. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think it's what can be. Uh, him and uh, yeah. Howard, Howard Berger yep. have their uh, their studio. Uh, he's worked on, uh, geez, uh, uh, Unbreakable, Sin City, a bunch of stuff. Uh, KMB EFX effects is the name of the company. What he's doing right now, though, or what he just did, I don't know if you guys read about this. There were three sharks used in the original Jaws. All three of them have been destroyed over time. In the 70s, they made out of the original mold a fourth shark that was used at Universal Studios, but it was from the same mold. Yeah. After a few years, they got rid of it. It ended up in a junkyard I over heard, in L.A. I remember it being in a junkyard. And it right. was in I the junkyard as part of the sign for years. Right. The guy who owned the junkyard died, left the business to his son. His son closed it down and got rid, was going to get rid of the shark. Nicotero, I don't know who, I don't think Nicotero himself bought it. Somebody bought it. Yeah. They're going to be making a, uh, a a museum of movie history. It's going to be in L.A. I think it opens next year. They bought it from the guy, brought it to Nicotero, and they restored it to huh. complete original painted teeth in it again. There was no yeah. teeth in it at all. I, I, I read it. This, uh, this was the one that used to come out of the ride. No, no. This was oh, th- this, this was uh, it was hanging. Well, I knew that. Yeah, but, it was but hanging, and you could like go put your head under it. Pr- but it prior was, to that, though, I mean, yeah, no. This was this was no. It wasn't a ride one. Okay. It was actually uh, it was the ride one wasn't the same mold. Oh, oh. This oh, was this. Oh. It wasn't used in the movie, but it was the last one made from the from same the mold. mold. Okay. And it is now officially done. I saw the pictures of them doing it. It is awesome. Sure it is. Uh, Joe Alves, who was the production designer on Jaws, went and like you know. Like there's a video of him like watching them do it, and uh, Jeffrey Hendricks, the guy who played, uh, is his name Jeffrey Hendricks? I can't remember. The guy who played the the deputy uh, in the first two movies. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. can't remember his can't actor's remember his name. name. Uh, he yeah. he's there. So Nick Nicotero just did that as well. Yeah. But in this, he was uh, he wasn't just an actor. He was also one of Tom Savini's guys. Yep. He was working with Tom, working making with his Tom. making his bones in the 
the effects biz, yeah. basically. Yeah, I know really, he does well, a lot really of scene, too, homages right? to that stuff in The Walking, in the Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. he's, he's, had, a, he's had a bub. He's had a bub yeah. in The Walking Dead. Like well, I said, he did the thing where the guy rolls and all the guts fall out. I, I, he I, had a Dr. Tongue on The Walking right. Dead. Right. I, I have to say this. I mean, as as I was watching this. and Here, there's we, a, here we go. No, no, no. It's not going to be a we're not there yet? Not there yet. There's a lot of cues in this, particularly music cues. To Dawn? No. Well, there is to Dawn because they play well, they play the gonk a few times. Well, there's bum, a, bum, 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 bum. there you go. They Which play it a couple times. Get picked up in Shaun of the Dead. There's all this stuff. Well, that that's get that's from over. Dawn. Like right. At the, the end of Dawn when all the, the when they're showing the zombies like overrunning the mall and yeah. they're in the fucking and then, and then, yeah, ice yeah, yeah. skating rink. Right. The the it's called the gonk. It's a bum bum bum. bum. Da, dun, dun, dun. Uh, I didn't know that. Oh no. Bum 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 bum. And there's a few scenes and there's a few scenes in Day where you just hear bum 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 bum. Yeah. And then nothing else. Like, right, okay. right. It's real there's, quick. There's, there's a few. It's, it's a different sound to it. There's a few it, callbacks yeah. to, to Dawn. That's one of them. The part where uh, fucking uh, Joe, what's Joe's fucking name? In Joe Palato. Where, where he says, all the shopping malls are closed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they keep calling, yeah. uh, they keep calling uh, our Jamaican friend Flyboy, yeah. which, mm-hmm. which was uh, the main character there. And if you re- if you recognize at the end of Day of the Dead, the zombies that, that finally come down the mine, they're all blue. Yeah. They're, oh, all, they're yeah, all blue. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I actually, uh, you know, we're skipping ahead a little and bit. And I love the, skip a lot of the costumes in those. Oh, yeah. Th- that's what I wanted to bring up. And, and we'll, we'll go back. But yeah. Yeah. at the end of the movie, when, when the mine gets overrun by the zombies, uh, <laughs> here are some of the zombies you end up getting. Uh, you get the uh, football player zombie wearing, yes. wearing the mailbox uniform, number 22. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah. You, you get, this is a real brief scene. But uh, you get the Lionel Richie zombie. No, I saw. Did you guys notice I that? saw the Lionel Richie. There is zombie. a Lionel Richie zombie. There's a clown zombie. Yeah, yeah I saw uh, that. You get yeah. GI zombie. Yeah. Uh, you get a, a bride zombie. Yeah. You get the ballerina zombie. You get a tuxedo zombie. I did not see the ballerina yeah, zombie. Right yeah. before the the clown, there's a ballerina zombie trying to dance. Really? <laughs> yeah, she's dancing. Yeah. You get a golfer zombie. Yeah. You get a. Uh, a <laughs> Savini, Savini's a fucking clown, man. Savini's you get a, a white Aunt Jemima zombie. <laughs> yeah, okay. with the head wrap? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I put her down as white Aunt Jemima, but here's my favorite zombie. Oh, oh no, I did see that one. That's my right. favorite zombie right of the, the entire there, movie yeah, yeah. is at the end when the characters. Uh, again, we're jumping ahead, but at the end when the characters are, are going up the ladder. And I, who's the last one to go up the ladder? Is it, is it her? No, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's John. It's Flyboy. Flyboy. Yeah, Flyboy. I when, can't remember when, when Flyboy's going up the ladder. There's there's a, a zombie John. grabbing his foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is the Sir John zombie. Oh, there's a Sir John. I didn't see. He's that. wearing a fucking Hawaiian <laughs> shirt. He's got hair kind of. Oh like yeah, John's. yeah, yeah. You I motherfucker! Got it. I thought the same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that. <laughs> Me, and the, what's funny is me and him were watching it at the same time. Same night. So. Oh, same God. night. He's, he's, he's texting when you watch it. I was, like, holy, day. I'm like, I was like, holy shit, it's Sir John. There's, like, <laughs> there's a cowboy hat zombie. What's there, okay, cow, cowboy hat and zombie. And then there's like a Panama Jack hat. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He had the, the safari hat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They just, it's like they just go into some like Hollywood yeah. wardrobe and just yeah. start pulling like all. I'm surprised the village people didn't come out. Yeah, like right. construction fucking, zombie. What's, yeah. what's being thrown out? Okay, I'll take yeah. that. Yeah. I would, <laughs> I, who, you know, Janine Garofalo is fucking unfunny as she really is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you almost killed she, him. Uh, <laughs> she made a great joke once about, about everybody on the bus in speed. Just like how, like, she's like, you know, you've got the fucking... The you know the, the the Spanish fucking you know gang guy. You've got the white guy who's just going to work. She's like then you got the Eskimo with the fucking harpoon <laughs> Indian with the full headdress. Yeah, she's like every fucking stereotype is, yeah. is on that mm. bus, but it's equally represented. But they're all equally represented. The Asian guy that works on the laundry. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> diversity. Yeah, absolute oh, diversity. So man. so so to go back to to the film again, uh, now that we talked about the cast and everything. So you've got this the Cats military and dogs. You, yeah, living together, <laughs> mass hysteria. We we don't we don't know what their mission has been in terms of like we don't get fed that information except through uh, dialogue. Dialogue, yeah. But these these several um, uh, civilians, scientists, uh, pilots, all that stuff are being guided, I guess, by the military, watched by the military. Yep. Well, I guess we get that the military had set up this organization right. from the through the scientists and now that certain people are dead, it's starting to fall apart. Starting to, right. fall, right. starting to fall apart. Not only starting to fall apart, but the 
uh, grasp of power is switching. Yeah. She even says at one point, you guys are here to support us. Right. right. It's a civilian and, operation. And he's, like, he's like, things are changing, sweetheart. Yeah. Right. Yep. So you can I see I got my the, bandolier now. <laughs> the power <laughs> is definitely shifting. He makes it a big point, too, to mention that, like, you've only lost, like, two people, and we've lost, like, five at this point. Like, like the, there was more people when this all started. Sure. And the military guys seem to be getting the worst end of it. Well, yeah. Over, over the civilians. That's usually what happens. Yeah. But, but again, I mean, it's, if you're, if you're, <laughs> If you're bringing in Walking Dead and corralling them in a certain area of this underground complex, yeah, this is a dangerous situation. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, and 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 they really put that home when when the helicopter comes back and lands in the in the yard and it's all fenced off. But the more activity that they have out in the daylight, where the zombies are walking around, just agitates them right yeah well they say they say yeah. let's wait till nighttime yeah. because you're going to agitate them don't don't yeah. fill up the copter now because you know that'll be a plot point later but <laughs> right <laughs> well they, but they never they never get back to that they, they no they exactly. apparently like the copter apparently probably had like gas in it no or kidding. again the whirly bird <laughs> yeah, the, whirly the whirly bird, bird. <laughs> the whirly bird man. Uh, setting his yeah. character right uh, setting his yeah. character in movies this movie one of the things i, I agree, like about I it <laughs> <laughs> everybody talks about I agree. everybody talks about Dawn of the Dead, the fact that it takes place in a mall. Yeah. I don't hear nearly as many people talk about the fact that Day of the Dead takes place in this underground bunker, which by the way is a real fucking place. Real place. This is not sets. This yeah, it is looks in, well, it looks like where I work. This is in <laughs> Wampum, Pennsylvania. It's it's a mine and storage facility. And it is uh apparently uh there's actually a scene in the beginning where they're after they land the helicopter, they're driving back mm-hmm. through in the golf carts. They pass by some like boats and stuff that yeah. are in there. People store their boats right. there yeah. in the winter time. Yeah. So and they just said, uh, you know, just leave it down there. Like we're not gonna, like, we'll film around it. Right. So like some of the stuff you see down there, they, the in, campers. In, and, in the documentary, yeah. they actually said that there's like unimaginable amounts of government cheese down there. <laughs> they said there's just government cheese fucking <laughs> everywhere <laughs> down there. Um, but yeah, this stuff this, never goes bad. This no, it is, doesn't. This is a real. This makes is a, a hell real of a grilled place. cheese sandwich too. This is a real oh. place in the middle of Pennsylvania somewhere. I mean, when you watch it, you you could kind of imagine um, that it's uh, it's it's maybe just a couple sets strung together. Yeah, but it's not. And they said it was used. It was. It's, it's like fifty five degrees at all times. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the, the rooms like they I used said, just like work. <laughs> the rooms they used as uh, as like the laboratory or the room that uh, that she sleeps in were actually offices. Yep. That the administrative people would mm. use. For, to do work down there, um, I don't know. I just I think I think the setting of this movie, and again, it's partially because of the budget. They yeah. couldn't do as much they wanted to do, like out. You know, all of the stuff you see outside, yeah. everything, even the helicopter landing was filmed in Florida. Right. The mine and everything is filmed in in Pennsylvania. Yep. It's 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 important because it it captures the claustrophobia. Right. Of the situation. Yeah. You know, you didn't really need Doctor Frankenstein. To tell them that they were outnumbered and that they're probably the only survivors, uh, you already felt that based on their claustrophobia underground. Right. And you can see that they're falling apart. And they're falling apart not only because they're surrounded by zombies, but because of this claustrophobia. They're together with people that they don't like. They're dying off. This guy's fucking kind of like the cutting thing. people up for, you know, God knows what. Nobody knows what this guy's really <laughs> up to. And so they, they know that it's not, it's not going anywhere. And the only two that really, realize that i feel are fucking flyboy and uh drunk englishman right yeah. yeah and that's you know they have their little their little piece of the pie where they they fucking hang out and you know they're ready to go at any they, time. Very, they very much have the attitude of a, i don't give a shit yeah about right. what's going on with you guys yeah. but then but then when the chips do fall they end up becoming they do end up know, helping they end up helping yeah out. they're heroes they're, they're yeah like, they're, like what uh billy boy said we're yeah. heroes yeah they're they're not they're not just uh what's the word i'm looking for they're not just uh Fuck, I can't think of the word, but they're not, you know, basically like, oh, who cares what's blood going suckers? On? No, I, I, I can't think. Of it. Ambivalent, something like. Well, that. I think at one point, Flyboy says, "Look, he needs us. He doesn't need any of you. You right. guys are the ones who should be worried." Well, right. I, I love it when she comes down. You know, they, they're going to bring her down to get her drunk, and and she's like, "What do you do? You don't do anything. You drink our water. You eat, eat our, our food. food yeah. You don't do anything." And he goes, right. I, "I fly the whirly fly bird. The, fly the whirly bird. Come on, and, and, that's where and my like, friend here gets oh. drunk. Yeah." yeah. <laughs> He gets yeah, really. And, honestly, what what does he do? I don't does he know have he a does. job? He no, fixes he the nothing. World War II era 
radio equipment. He right. even says that at he's one point. Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. the communications guy who, who, because there's no one to communicate with, doesn't really need to, you know, he'd be <laughs> right. like, yeah, you know. I mean, you see him doing things when in the beginning of the movie, right? but that's about it. He's just, otherwise he's just that's staggering what, around. That's what drunk. he's there for. Yeah. 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 Right. Everybody's yeah. got kind of their job. You know, it's funny. Yeah. I recognize that guy. But I, I don't know anything else that he's in. I, I looked it up. And but he seemed so familiar looking. So many of these actors. because he looks like Rowan Atkinson. Well, that's the thing. Well, he does. Yeah. So that many it? Of them. He looks like Mr. Bean. Yeah, he maybe does. that's it. They, yeah. they all look kind of familiar. They all had uh, good diction and, and voices that you're like, oh, th- they should have moved on to do other things. And Yeah, if you if you go on the IMDb and, and look up most of these people, there ain't a whole lot going right, on. Right, like the, the lead actress, I figured she's she was pretty good. Yeah. You know, she she held her own yeah. against all these, well, aggressive males. Yeah. <laughs> Being the only female, you know, trapped in a cave full yeah. of fucking dudes. Yeah. It's, and it's, and it's, you're it's basically actually, the lead. Mm-hmm. You know? It's actually pretty amazing that in this movie, they never even, oh, I mean, I'm, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But they never get around to any weird rapey like behavior from these guys. Yeah, they're it's there's insinuated. It's insinuated. Yeah. Oh, but, there's a well, a little bit with Steel. Obviously, it's, it's insinuated in terms more, of what they're saying. Not but, just him. I but mean, you n- you never get like a scene where like they corner her and like right. that. No, which, no. Which if you see this movie for the first time, which you know I can't remember the last the first time I saw it, but that would definitely be in my head. It's like when's it going to yeah. happen? Where no, these guys? I think I think I think they made you feel that. As it hasn't happened, that if if, if this keeps up, it will yeah. eventually. There's they, there's that really they, weird well, there's scene. An awful lot of death threats yeah. for for a, for a group of people that are on their way. I mean, obviously, there's only so many of them. I'm going to threaten your death yeah. <laughs> every right. five minutes. It's just it's a little excessive. There's that really weird scene where um, where she is. I think it's the scene where she ends up going back. You know, their their little their the trailer, the Ritz, the Ritz. Yeah, the Ritz. Yeah. Ritz. Welcome yeah. to the Ritz. But like where she's walking down the hallway, and then like all the soldiers just come out wrestling each other. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like like everyone's at, fighting in the hallway. They're at the point where these guys are just fighting with each other. It's mm-hmm. like almost like they're they want to touch each other and like yeah. they don't know how and to actually, tell each other. Yeah, you're right. At one point, Rhodes insinuates about her relationship with Miguel. Oh, he's. Oh, not and he's like, one. why don't you save some for all of us? Right, right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, even... Uh, why don't you save some for all of I us? Think, I think she held her, she held up herself hey, pretty well with that. Even John, them. even John at one point, I mean, who else is he talking to? He says, you know, why, do we, why don't we just leave here, go to paradise, and start making babies? Right, yeah. She's the only one that can make babies. Right. right? I mean, he's he's also, you know, kind of saying, I like to fuck you, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, well, she, that was bad Jamaican. That was awful. Yeah. She'd have the good tight bad. pants on. It sounded I mean, like a leprechaun. That was. That was. <laughs> right. Can I try that again? I'm I not going to edit it out, but I'm going to try it again. All right, hold All on. Right. Sarah, girl, how about we go to paradise in my whirly bird? <laughs> I'll give it to you good. We'll listen to some <laughs> shabarank. Yeah. <laughs> Still sounds Irish. Yeah, no good. No Still good. sounds all right, Irish. All right, no good. All right. So okay, it's a so, little Irish Jamaican for sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about gore. Let's talk oh. about. So let's get into the Not horror enough. aspect of it. Not yeah. enough gore. Really? See, yeah. I think I think compared that, compared to I, the other uh, Dawn of the Dead, I thought there was less gore in this. No, there, I think there's I really. Think I think there's more. I think yeah. by volume, mm-hmm. by volume, there's maybe less gore. But when gore well, happens in this movie, god damn, it's awesome. I mean, Dawn opens. Dawn opens with oh that massive the, like riot scene the riot and, scene where they shoot the guy in the head and his head literally fucking explodes <laughs> so it's kind of hard to exp- you know surpass right. an exploding head yeah. in the first five minutes of a film you know so yeah Dawn definitely has Dawn has a lot of gore right at the beginning mm. during that whole scene you know the the guy bites his wife's neck off fucking this dude's head explodes I think it's the same dude whose head explodes. <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of gore at the beginning. Then it calms down for a while as sure. they're getting, you know, they're getting used to life in the mall or whatever. You gotta get to, get to know the and then characters. Once, and, and then once the biker gang comes in, everything fucking, <laughs> everything picks up again. Um, but Day, I think, I don't know, I, th- I think Day is a far gorier movie. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bodies on tables and pieces and parts and things of that nature. And it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You got you got well. Th- there's you got pulling th- apart at the end. Well, at you know, the end, the, yeah. Oh, you get, the, the, I thought the, there was a lot of gore the, the, myself. The, okay, again, going back to the the world's that's end. That's the that's the goriest scene I think 
in the whole movie, though, when they pull him apart. Yeah. Oh, when they pull Rhodes apart? But yeah. then you've got the gore, like, when he's awesome. s- sitting on the table and he sits up and all the guts, all the guts fall, fall out. out. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. One, of my, then, one then of my favorite scenes, the shovel. You're, that what you're yeah, the to shovel. Oh, I, I love Those that are the, scene. The two scenes that I remember the most from, from 1985 going to see the movie yeah. is... Well, the, the shovel scene is a big the thing. The shovel scene it's and the guts on the it's table. It's so dark. You know? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the best is, like, after he does the shovel and then flicks the head away, <laughs> when they're running away, you see the eyes moving back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys notice now? You get a lot more at the very end, but did you notice that when they're wa- they kill the brain? You only severed it. Yeah, only severed it. There's <laughs> two separate sequences where they're walking from the main concourse to the Ritz. One of them is when she's walking with uh, with Billy Boy to go back to see John at the Ritz, and there's another scene later when um, when uh, uh, Rhodes and the guys are coming. Both times when they show characters, did you notice the bat that flies in the back? Oh, yeah, the oh, bat. Yeah. Yeah. But it was the same Both bat were... in the same area. Yeah. It, it just, I think they might have had it on like a fucking, like going around. <laughs> yeah. And they ha- they also had it fly by, uh, what's it, the uh, fucking. Uh, Rhodes, wasn't it? Or, no, or, or uh, Steel. Jamaican. Uh, uh, yeah, John. When, he's, when he's running around with the fucking pistols. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. the and fourth movie right that we've reviewed that had a bat flying by. A cameo by. with a bat, yeah. There's yeah. four. Well, once they end up in the caves at the very end, the bats are, are, are going around quite a bit, so yeah. I'm okay with that. But th- like, if you watch the movie two times in the same, yep. the exact same scenario or the exact same set piece, the bat like, they probably just had it like on a whip <laughs> I, going I have around. To, I have to say though, I, at one point, it, was it the military guys were, were bitching about how they were running out of Ammo. samples? For for Doctor Frankenstein to tear apart. No, they were talking about how dangerous it was to get. Samples. Well, there was that too. But they were the, running out of ammo. That's well, they were running out of ammo. But yeah. I, I could have sworn that they mentioned at one point there that they were running out of out of the samples. They would have to go get more. I think it was. Uh, I think it was one of the doctors complaining about running out of samples. Yeah, or maybe I maybe think, it was I think, a, I think the, they the guy say. that they yeah, shot. Had the head. to be a doctor. Yeah, yeah. the guy who uh, maybe it was him. I've never yeah. seen no. George A. Romero's Martin, but apparently that guy played Martin in that movie. Yes. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen that movie. Great movie. So have we even gotten to the part where we meet Bub for the first time? Oh, yeah. No, no. no. We're not really talking about Bub. Who's Bub? Larry, who's Bub? Bub is apparently an ex-soldier. Uh, they they kind of surmise uh, who is a. I don't know if he's a smart zombie to begin with. But Dr. Frankenstein there seems to think that he can train Bub to not be violent. Uh, so he's got him chained to the wall and, you know, he's, he's putting his hand near his mouth. Bub's not even trying to bite him. Giving Bub a copy of Salem's Lot yeah. uh, to, try, <laughs> to try to read. Because, a razor blade in yeah. Salem's Lot, I yeah. think. Which was a, a nice, telephone. Which was a nice, a nice little thing for his friend Stephen King who he made Creepshow with. Yeah. 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 They always, they put, he's always putting Stephen King stuff in his movies. So, yeah, Bub is just a uh, sort of, I don't want to say domesticated because he's definitely not. But he's a zombie who remembers things. Yeah. Right? When he sees... Uh, the soldiers, for the first time, he snaps to he, attention. Yep. Salutes, he salutes, salutes him. him. Yep. And uh, the doctor tries to get I'm him to salute I'm not saluting that oh, thing. <laughs> <laughs> I like the uh, telephone scene. Oh, where awesome. He goes, talk to your Aunt Alicia. Yeah, Come on, he- say hello to Aunt Alicia. Say hello to your Aunt Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> Come yeah. on, Bub. And he explains that he calls him Bub because Bub is what his father's nickname was. And he goes in this weird story about his father was a rich surgeon. But uh, you know, like, yeah. And then there's a great scene where you overhear one of the tapes that he's playing. Oh, for later Bob. on, it's and it's just like totally it sounds crazy. like it sounds like he's like like yelling at him as a parent. Like, yeah. don't do that, Bub. You know, mother won't approve of that. Like, right. it's all stuff you've got to listen for because it's being played in the background. Yep. And it all kind of devol- It all kind of gives you the, uh, some look, insight into insight it. into like how fucking yeah. kind of crazy. Crazy, uh, Doctor Frankenstein is fucking. He's losing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's definitely. I but I still I've always kind of thought that he still thought he was doing the right thing. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, but he definitely did overstep his bounds when he tried to feed uh, Greg Nicotero. <laughs> to, to Bub. Yeah, we we find out that uh, the way he's rewarding Bub because he says he goes. What does he say? Good, good you behavior. Re- yeah, good behavior to reward. deserves rewards. <laughs> yeah, civility. Civility yeah. deserves rewards. You know, you basically everyone find deserves out, a reward. You basically find out he's feeding the dead soldiers' bodies to Bub as Bub, as Bub is. Those eating. are my men. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do a pretty good, uh, good <laughs> roads. <Sometimes>. Yeah, <laughs> just and then Rhodes. Yeah, unfortunately the for the doctor, Rhodes finds out that uh, he is what the fuck are you feeding him? Well, actually, first uh, Sarah and uh, wasted too many bullets. On Sarah it. found out. Sarah figured out, and you could tell she was. <laughs> you could tell she was fucking grossed. She out. was grossed out by it. Yeah. Well, when she and and it was she and uh, what, what's his name there the the, the drunk English guy. Oh, uh, <laughs> Billy. Keep forgetting his Billy name. Boy. Because they go McDermott. they go back and and that's where uh, Flyboy was like, "Would you have?" 
30 minutes. Yeah. 30 minutes I come find you. And, right. and they're off, and that's when they find out that Frankenstein's off is fucking nuts. Oh, that's yeah. after uh, that's after Miguel gets bit. Oh, that's right. And then yeah, they, yeah, they, they right, bring him yeah. back. That's a great scene. She right amputates. Because we, yeah. we didn't see that happening. Yep. Well, <laughs> you gotta throw it in there. Fucking <laughs> Out of all the men they've got, let's let's give the poll to the guy that can't yeah. apparently hold well, what, on to the what, fucking thing. But right? what's fucked up is it, that one wasn't his fault. The fucking yeah. strap broke. The strap broke. Yeah, 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 the first one was his fault. Yeah. Well. You're that fucking, which. Yeah. You're making fucking like assholes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe look like a fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Yeah, Miguel. Miguel. I, my, uh, my note for Miguel here is uh, I'm, I'm, what, did I, what did I, I wrote here. Uh, manic bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Miguel, really, really that's well, about Miguel right. is essentially a manic bitch from moment one of the movie. Yeah. The first scene you see Not him in. Fucking drug me up. <laughs> yeah, I the know. First really. scene, Shut up. Give me the drugs. I want to go to sleep. Jesus, really? Yeah. <laughs> and then he and then he gets shitty with her when she can't sleep, and he's like, "You should take some sedative, Sarah. <laughs> She'll be able to sleep." <laughs> He's just yeah. You're, Miguel, you're stronger than me. Everybody yeah. knows it. Yeah. The the whole idea that they yeah. were the ones having sex is yeah. really weird. Yeah, it was totally. It's wrong. really weird. I mean, I she guess, was the dominant one. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. What did he say to she her? She probably fucked him. Like she you, you probably. Know what? I wasn't gonna on. go they there. That, you know, they yeah. call that pegging. Yeah, yeah. she pegging. Yeah, <laughs> she's okay. pegging. I think no, she again, I wasn't gonna go there. Yeah, but I, yeah. you guys had I went to go there. I went there. She was. I think Miguel is a fucking dartboard, and Sarah's the dart. Hey, uh, girl. Making me look like a bitch. You're making me look like such a fun. The guy's got a great delivery because he's he not not one of his he's lines. Such just, a weasel, that guy. He is. He's not one of his. The first scene in the movie is when in the first thing you see him in is when they're in the in the woody bud <laughs> and they're flying over Florida and he's just like crouched in the corner like. Yeah. Oh. I don't want to be here. It's like, just get the, nobody <laughs> wants to be Can here. Can somebody Miguel. push that motherfucker yeah, right. out of the fucking helicopter, please? Uh, I, I want to give. We a can't of, all get in the whirly bird. I want to give a couple shout outs real quick to some of our uh, podcasting friends out there who actually have some ties into the George A. Romero universe. Uh, first one is our buddy Dino from uh, Ha Podcast. Dino, yeah. Dino lived. In uh, in Fort Myers, Florida, which is where, where that filmed. first scene was filmed. Right. Um, I don't know. I'll have to ask him whether he lived there at the time. But he lived there, and uh, and the guy, the guys from Ghost of the Stratosphere. Yep. Andy lives in Monroeville, which is where oh, the mall from Dawn is, big. and that's actually also either Monroeville or a town over. So the scenes above ground are all Florida. Hmm. All right. The scene, like I said, the helicopter landing pad, all that's Florida. Everything underground, I believe, is in Wampum, Pennsylvania, which is where the mine is. The elevator scenes are in Monroeville as well. It's a, oh, okay. it, either Monroeville or near Monroeville. There is a, a X missile silo. So, like they said, like when they're filming them getting onto the elevator, they're not in Florida anymore. And then when the elevator's going, they're not even in the actual the mine. And then when they get off, they're in the mine. They're so, all over the place. Movie magic, but uh, yeah. I used to, I used to, uh, there was one time I went to the Pittsburgh Comic Con and and uh, they would regularly gather as much of the Romero uh, cast. For all the the dead movies, well, they there. do they do at at the Monroeville Mall every year. Yeah, they, they, they do, do that. Big, that is the mall when the Ghost of the Stratosphere guys go yeah. to the movies yeah. to review movies. They go to that mall. But, wow. but the old yeah. the old yeah. Pittsburgh Comic Con used to do that. And and the first year that I ever met Doug Paskevich was also a year that I met uh, Tom Savini there. Oh, really? <laughs> it was uh, it was a pretty wild little uh, experience for that tiny little Pittsburgh Comic Con that would. Went on for quite a few years. Pretty interesting movie, in yeah. my opinion. Uh, I, again, I think I think the people that dislike this movie, although I'm going to ask John straight out because uh-huh. he doesn't seem to be a fan of it, no, probably have the biggest <laughs> problem with it because of the what is considered the slowness of it. Okay? No, it, no, okay. You so, know me; it's not slow. So, what is it about this movie that uh, that loses you? It's it's the story. The story loses me. It just overall, it doesn't work. There's an there's enough missing, and if it's supposed to be done over a what 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 do they give her a timeline on this like thing? five days yeah it's a couple of days she, yeah, in, in the beginning just, when she's looking at the at the calendar it appears to be at the end of october, october 31st uh-huh. and the, the movie ends on november 4th it, yeah. it just drives me nuts with the over intensity of it i i can't well, take it i i also don't, don't I forget also, we don't know how long they've been down there. well that's true that's true and and i'm okay with that i think that she's she's a very good um personality to roll through the whole thing i mean i I like that i like some of the characters i just don't like where this the plot goes it's if these scientists are are this involved with what's going on they should have realized long ago that their leader is a fucking nut and 
nothing's happening. If they know that nothing's happening, well, at least let the 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 so-called well, military remember, know. Well, remember, there was a different leadership before. It was yeah, Cooper I know. Before. But again, it's just there's and a lot of this guy's there's a lot of misgivings I have. He about, wants to move fast. Yeah, I think I, it's it's like saying, okay, there's a plot hole here, or there's some missing story here. Just suck it up. I'm not one to suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently, no. I, I'll yeah. shot. I'll shoot this thing through with more holes than they put into the doctor, who just makes no sense when they shoot him. He was filled with lead. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Sure. They for, just put a bullet in his brain for 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 a crew yeah, that no, makes it a point that they're low on ammo. Right. Rhodes shoots the fuck out of that dude. Yeah. He does. He loads him. Which but, honestly, but, but, in, but if is, I was is, in his, is Rhodes a logical person? No. 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 no, of course no not. None of them are. You know. No, what, but you know but he's got perfect hair. So he's not. He's not thinking about how many bullets he's wasting right now he's thinking about putting as much killing this guy as much as he can you yeah. know who the Rhodes That's character it. reminds me of <clears throat> is uh going to band of brothers the hbo uh, uh series the david trimmer character who Rhodes reminds me of that character and the fact that he yeah. seems like he's even though he's out there he seems like he's he's uh i, I see where you're going he there, seems right? like he has like a line of thinking and he knows what he wants to do when shit falls apart at the end, when the zombies take over the base, oh. he is like he's like Burke and aliens. He's yeah. just running. Well, he yeah. he, he's, he, he, he spends a lot his of, men. He spends a lot of time talking about his his men, his yeah. men, my men. These are my men, but they're not. And then as soon as <laughs> fucking he sees that elevator, he finds the first golf cart, locks yeah. the door, and fucking takes off. Yeah. And there's a, the the whole thing is the next ten minutes is steel fucking banging on different doors. <laughs> Rhodes, <laughs> yeah. Rhodes, you son of a bitch, Rhodes, you <laughs> bastard. And, and he's the only one to take himself out. Yeah, yeah. So. so let me let me ask you too. Yeah. Out of all those characters yep. that all die due to zombies and one shot himself, which one was the most satisfying to all of you? Like in terms of like, yeah. like which which death did you really like? Oh, Rhodes, 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 Rhodes' death. I mean, again, I'm not Larry is like the horror guy. I bow to Larry, oh. but like I've watched enough horror movies in my life to know that Rhodes' death is like classic amongst horror films. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's fun and it's fun to. Watch. I mean, do you mean as far as satisfying regarding how you didn't like the character? <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, the most satisfying one is is the doctor when he gets shot to pieces. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I no, would have done the good. same damn thing. Yep. That's the only thing that I think Rhodes did in the whole movie that made any sense. Well, I was just kind of glad that they gave each person <laughs> their own personal death, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Uh, to a point. Yeah. Everybody. everybody yeah, no, I think they gave own. everybody their own. I liked uh, particularly Rickles. Because he went out just fucking he, as goofy as yeah, he was yeah. the he whole was, time. He was fucking. He was like laughing. He was laughing, laughing through it. He yeah. gave up. He, yeah. he, he knew it was yeah. going to happen. I mean, yeah. that's oh, really speaking, where you're of, at. speaking of give up, we've been talking about this uh, fucking yeah. yellow Miguel. Right. Yeah. yeah, how <laughs> he yeah. gives up. How's he give up? Yeah. He fucking in, floods the. Pl- what the fuck are you thinking? That's right. We yeah. got to talk. You're about You're dying. That. You're dying. So your last fucking thing is to kill your girlfriend. And everybody under there. I, I all I could think of when I you're saw like, a scene like, like that. You're like one of those assholes who wants to kill themselves. Yeah. And you do it by trying to drive into a whole bunch of other fucking right, cars. Right. Right. Bring everyone yeah, else down. Yeah. There, there are certain things that happen in this movie that made me think of of that awful alien sequel, the one that we hated so much, where the scientists are all the dumbest scientists oh, in the Prometheus. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's, I kept thinking about this. I'm like, is this what Prometheus was based on? How there, stupid people can be? As, I mean. as, as weird as it is with the Miguel death, I almost feel like he... So one of the big things that to me stands out is that he he goes up, he, he turns on the... Uh, he turns on the uh, the elevator, right? And then when he lays down, he puts the the, uh, the metals in his mouth. Yeah, I almost feel like in his head he thinks he's he's just he's ending it for everybody. In my head, like he's right, he's a I don't think he's, yeah, but he I don't destroyed think, the friggin' no, elevator. Yeah, don't, and don't fucking make that. Well, call. no, no, I mean ending it, as in bringing them down. Oh yeah, well, and gonna yeah. let this it's, this this final wave. Everyone, everybody, it's over. Yeah. You know? so, he, so you think he thinks he's doing people a favor? I think yes. I think partially he thinks Rhodes and them fuck them. I'm gonna kill them. Yeah, and then the people that were okay to me, even though I'm a manic bitch. This will be their way out. We're psychoanalyzing you know? a character in a horror movie. Well, but I, uh, it's a well-written horror it's movie. It's a smart though. horror movie. Yeah, you can psychoanalyze a, a smart. I, I horror don't. Movie. I don't think that he'd have any reason to do it out of like pure spite against Sarah, yeah, John and Billy Boy. I do think that he probably is like fuck you, Rhodes. You know, you guys, you know, have been pooping. You know, how, how, we don't even know how long. Right. You know, that's one of the things I don't know. Maybe you know, Larry. Like, did Romero ever set like a timeline? Did Night of the Living Dead take place in 68 and this is really 85? No. God, right. No, no, okay. no. This these is not are, like 20 is, years. This is all taking place right one right after some yeah. some concurrently. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's all at the same time. 
So, yeah, I, I think, you know, again, that was a bitch way to go out. I mean, he, he suicides himself with everybody else. Yeah. Um, and, he, and then, you know, he brings on the terror of the Lionel Richie. So, yeah. In his massive <laughs> elevator. That elevator's pretty fucking yeah. big. And the elevator, I, I, I thought so. And actually, when I was looking up on IMDb, like the trivia, it's the same sound as the alarm in Aliens when the... Uh, oh, the yeah. The same... Uh, same exact alarm sound they oh, use in Aliens, yeah, for the uh, at the ending when the when the base is going to explode. So another favorite uh, death of mine was the the soldier right before Rhodes. Same, pretty much kind of kill. Instead of getting ripped, was it happened, steel? No, the one who they ripped his head off. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, so, yeah. I know. So, but I just love how when they're ripping his head off, you hear his voice. The get voice higher changes and higher as the vocal yeah. cord. And that was also fucking... reminded me of the thing yeah. when the yeah. head came off. That I hope awesome. you and, choke on it. And that was that's <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> that's the classic. That's the classic rose. Choke on choke him. Choke on him. And it was ad lib too. It was ad lib. Yeah. Um, yeah, which the, it's on the back of a shirt. I saw somebody with a shirt that has roads in half, and it says "choke on them." <laughs> Tom, Tom Savini, yeah, uh, in the in that documentary again, uh, was talking about this movie, and uh, and he's saying that the most disappointing kill in the movie for him is the one you're just talking about because he said that he had this elaborate rig. But because Romero wanted the guy to have a shirt on, you couldn't see. Like he's like they're tearing at his body, but you don't see what I wanted you to see. He, you he, want to see the actual tear. You want to see the tears. But he says he goes I. I saw this movie ten times before someone pointed out to me that the the uh, special effects guys made the vocal cords go up. Yeah, and he's like, it saved it for me. He's yeah. like, he's like, I never noticed that the first ten times yeah. I saw the movie. And then someone said, that's great how you guys did that. And he's like, did what? That wasn't my. That wasn't me. And he's like, holy shit. Yeah, because the head's coming off and it's going. Ah! Yeah. It's going up. <laughs> so to me, well, and and there's a little bit right before it where like one of the zombies gets the finger under the skin yeah. Yeah. and just pulls back yep. like and you just see the eyeball just oh, yeah. I was like what a great piece Thumbs of fucking effect in the fucking eyeballs yeah. there's some crazy shit going like, on they had some good eyeball effects with Rickles too oh yeah, yeah. well Rickles they pull his like his whole face off to yeah. the point where the eyeball is just hanging out yep. Yep. fucking gross and the and the again uh, the the Pilato the Joseph Pilato death at the end so they're they're talking about in the documentary how and he said, because they're interviewing him a couple years ago, he said he still smells it to this day. They <laughs> bought a bunch of pig guts. Yep. They have oh, pig yeah. guts, right, for, for this movie, oh, yeah. for all the spills and everything. And every time they'd film something, they'd put them back in the buckets and refrigerate them. Yep. Mm. The crew they, had they to leave. They don't keep. <laughs> the crew, well, they kept them refrigerated. They, yeah, were, they were okay. It doesn't matter. They don't keep. <laughs> the crew left for a week to film in Florida, film like uh, like uh, helicopter coverage and stuff. When they were gone, someone unplugged the fucking refrigerator. Oh, oh, man. When they come back, and the only thing they didn't explain is why they just didn't buy more pig guts. But when they come back, they've got to film the Rhodes death scene. And he, his body is in a trap door. Oh. They used Covered the guts oh. that were... Pig guts. And they actually showed a behind-the-scenes filming of it's it. Like and as, as they're filming, they've got you know the zombies ripping at him and everything. And, and when filming stops, the zombies are fanning it. <laughs> And he looks like he's going to fucking barf. Yeah. He's moving his head as far away as he can. And then they film again. And then when they stop filming again, they're waving and they're oh. trying to... The pig guts had gone totally fucking rotten. I got to watch oh, I got to watch that. Rancis. Yeah. I got to watch that. I cannot tell you enough. If you like this movie, watch that documentary. It is that was a good scene. I mean, they literally pull him in half yeah. and he's still screaming and yelling uh, yeah. half of his, his body. Fucking, his fucking... Half his body's going down the hall. Yeah. Yeah. And he's screaming, Choke and, and, and yeah. that's a great scene too. Immediately after that, because it's literally like two minutes of them just eating him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the white Aunt Jemima is just like eating yeah. his hand. Yeah, and nine, 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 it's nine, just nine, like nine, this nine, funny yeah. kind of like little coda. Don't, and don't they cut to where they're eating steel in the other room? I think they cut to that. I as think well. yeah, I think they go to the, them eating him too. And steel, yeah. uh, steel is another one. His death is pretty good too, because I mean, here's this guy who. He's just a piece of shit. I mean, yeah. he's just well, such he's, a piece he, of shit. He goes down fighting. He does go down fighting. And, and he, he, quite a few of them He out. takes out as many as he can, and then he takes himself out before they can get to him. Well, he, one of them bit him already. Yeah, oh, one that's of them right. That's right. He, well, yeah, he had a tear. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And actually, right. you know, before we didn't mention, too, when Bub comes and he sees they the doctor, he sees... Gun. <laughs> yeah, he, Bub shoots him, but he sees the doctor previous Bub's, to that. Bub's a good shot, And he man. starts yeah. crying. Yeah. Yeah, Bub has a very human reaction when he sees Frankenstein dead. Yeah. Bob uh, shot. I think Bob shot him three times. Oh, yeah, Bob, he shot him. Yeah, yeah three times. He, yeah, right. shot. Yeah. He shot uh, Rhodes. What? Like three times. Like once in the yeah, back. Right yeah, in the back. back. One leg. One leg. In the stomach. One in the arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah was yeah. it stomach? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because he was shambling down the and aisle. And then he does that then, awesome I, salute I, at I, the end. I had yeah. to laugh at that. That that was one good thing. Is like, so Rhodes is uh, stumbling down the the hallway, looking like a zombie. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And like, oh, that's. 
That's funny. Leaving a trail yeah. of blood as he's going along. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Like Lindsay's watching with me at that point. She's actually watching it when he's just like, like walking against the wall. Yeah. She's like, Oh Jesus. And then, you know, he turns around and gets shot one more time. And, and even he, I think he's just like, like he knows yeah. at this point, like he, okay, I got shot in the leg in the back. I can keep going. Yep. Now he's like, fuck. Yep. And it's like, there's <laughs> nothing that, that this, yeah. And then they rip him in half. Yeah. <laughs> right. An absolute half. Right. And, uh, and whirly bird captain and uh, drunk Englishman <laughs> and and Sarah make their way to the to the whirly bird. Yep, and uh, get themselves to that uh, tropical. Oh, island. and they do another jump scare. jump scare scene where it turns into a dream again. Yeah, like, kind of backwards. But. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I, I this guess, island paradise. <laughs> Let's I mean, make the babies. I guess they get away, right? I mean, they're on the island. There doesn't seem to be any zombies. Do they get away? Or, or it, so if yeah, fish, that's the way I read it. They're fishing. I read it too. Yeah. There's there's fishing going on. So wow, a lot of got some activity on the two fifteen yeah, yeah. road here. Not, hopefully, not it's, hopefully it's not a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, no. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Where were you when it started? <laughs> fucking podcasting about <laughs> yeah. zombies. <laughs> fucking figures. I guess that's ironic. Yeah. I don't know that Alanis Morissette song fucked me up with that word forever. Yeah, none of <laughs> isn't that ironic? I'm not sure, no. Alanis, because nothing you said was. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> whole song forks and but that would songs. be ironic. Technically, would be. this would be ironic. this would be ironic. Yeah, yeah. true irony. Uh, I wanted to bring one more thing up in this movie in, in particular that is, um, I guess, amongst fandom, very divisive. And they were talking about this again. Uh, I didn't know this, but I could kind of tell when I was watching it and paying attention to it. I'm like, this probably irritated people. The score. I like the score to this movie. The score, the score. The score is by a guy named John Harrison, who is the second unit director. He he, he was George Romero's second unit director. He's kind of like uh, John Carpenter, where he is also a musician. Yep. Well, it sounds like it. The score is definitely very much... Like this weird. There were times during it, the movie that I felt like I, I was a watching a sitcom or yeah. a sitcom or like yeah. a TV movie of the week. Well, it's very eighties. <laughs> very, it's 80s. very eighties. Yeah. Yeah. and it reminded me a bit of Carpenter movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely that. But it's it's so stuck in the eighties. But Got it's that also Casio going away. But there. it's also <laughs> did, did anybody else feel that it seems like okay? So when I think of like like Carpenter doing like Halloween and. Halloween theme and even the music throughout yeah, it. Well, this was more it's involved. Up, it's upbeat too. It seems like it, yeah. it. It doesn't seem like you know, like I don't know. I, I expect the horror movie. I expect maybe a little bit more of darker tones. Mm -hmm. And this just seems to have a little bit more of a of a positive vibe going on to it. <laughs> it's lighter. Again, it's I don't dislike lighter. it, but it's like it's here's, different. Here's this movie about a bunch of you know military guys who are who are like going insane slowly. And uh, zombies are taking over, and then like let's have fucking you know let's have this happy go lucky kind of soundtrack going to it. I don't know. I, I just I, I kind of found it a little odd. And and they did say the the guy John Harrison, the the composer in in, the, in that uh, documentary, he does say that like uh, the, there was major fan backlash. People like, fucking hated it. They were pissed mm -hmm. off about that that soundtrack. Huh. Well, that's... I didn't I didn't get that feeling. Yeah, yeah no, I was always fine with it. I never had a problem with it. Um, like I said, I, I always liked that they shoved uh, the gonk in there a couple times. Again. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any problem with the score. All right. No. All right. So uh, so anything you guys want to add? Is there anything we missed? Anything we want to talk about a little bit more uh, in uh... – I don't think so. I think we got uh... – I think we got everything for this. I don't want to talk too much about night or dawn because who knows if yeah those might pop right. up. Those might pop up. I, at some I'll, point. I'll say this. Yep. I'm I'm personally tired of of movies where <laughs> the, sick of this shit. The military first episode. I'm done. I'm mad as hell. It's, <laughs> it's just that the military is always take the it shit anymore. into the stick. You know, it's like it, every every one of these movies that I watch that that's got the military's the bad guy. The military's the bad guy. You don't even have one single soul in that group of soldiers that's positive in any well, apparently way. cooper was nice Who? That the, the one that uh the one that died so oh yeah well. yeah well yeah he's dead though he's yeah. not in the movie <laughs> nicotero was fine his character was yeah fine. he was good I, well was yeah, good we, we there was one, one one good scene with him where he's not going to shoot the girl right bang you're dead shoot her well no that was steel <laughs> that was there steel. there there was one that was steel I thought that, that was steel was no no uh, there was one guy who what was, was it? What, what cultivating what was, weed what was the scene that he had then who, Nicotero? Yeah. He makes uh, a joke at one point. While that's happening, he is he's he's got his gun and it looks like he's pointing it kinda like at everybody. Like he doesn't know what to do. He was uh, supposed to shoot no, he was, steel, right? If steel didn't shoot the girl. Oh, maybe. Because he, he does say if 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 he doesn't do it, I'll have you shoot. Right. 
And then, yeah, that's maybe, what maybe, it was. Yeah, maybe that's right. what it was. Yeah. And he, I, he, there's a point where he cracks a was joke. Was that there, like, But I thought I thought he was the one that was supposed remember. to shoot the girl, and then Steel was supposed to shoot him. No, but, uh, Steel was supposed uh, right. no, okay, Steel, right. Steel was yeah, because Steel, yeah. bang, you're yeah. dead. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not kidding, Steel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Shoot her. I also want. I also want to point out. Real, and she stood there the whole time yeah. like a fucking robot. Real yes, quick. sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Fuck you, sir. Yeah. Uh, another another great uh, uh, a line of dialogue that I just don't understand what it means, uh, and I'm I'm assuming it might be old timey slang. Is when uh, when they have that like dinner, you know, where where Frankenstein shows up and it's like, what's for dinner? And yeah. they're, 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 is there they're, food? Their set their seven p.m. meal is uh, when Frankenstein explains everything that he's been doing. And uh, and uh, Rhodes says something about I'm getting tired of you giving me all this Greek salad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what? what? I yeah. gotta look. I didn't look it up so far. Do you guys know what Greek no. salad oh, it was is? A total thing back then. I, I think he said for sure. Greek salad coming out of your mouth or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I know Greek salad's a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he yeah. says to me, he goes, he goes, I love we're, feta cheese. We're <laughs> trying, we're trying <laughs> to figure this out and survive, and you just all I got's Greek salad coming out of your mouth. What's that? Just <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Nothing? Feta cheese. I per- uh, I purposely sure. wrote it down. Just because of cheese and olives guys, falling yeah. out of his mouth. <laughs> Yeah. Cheese and guess, olives everywhere. <laughs> fuck olives. Oh, oh I hate God. olives. Fuck olives. They gave me two items. Other, <laughs> two items, I take. <laughs> There's one other right. bit with uh, Sarah and uh, John. Yeah. You know, when they were just talking, and I think he finally got her to sort of change her ways, because he was talking about record keeping, all kinds of oh, yeah. details. Like, Don't about, ever have this happen again. Yeah, Don't yeah. bring the people no down here. No cares about the records. That was, that, was the worst, that was worse than mine. Hey, because it's a fucking <laughs> awful, awful accent. That was Italian. <laughs> Don't hey, bring the people down, down here. here. I'll give you a Greek salad. All right, so you know what? <laughs> <laughs> now that we've talked about Day of the Dead, yeah. uh, I guess I guess w- w- with all these movies, I, I want to come down to a couple things. First question, I'll, I'll ask each one of you. Yeah. All right. First question is Lloyd. I'll ask you horror movie we're talking about. Yep. Did it scare you? Did it scare me? Uh, Nineteen eighty-five. Me. Yeah, a little bit. I, li- I liked. I liked the scares that were in it. Even, I li- I liked even the today's gore. view, even after seeing it several times, like I've seen Alien a million times. Alien still scares me. Do you watch Day of the Dead, and, and do you at any point get scared? Do you do you does it uh, get a reaction out of you for, that way? Uh, not really scared, right? I mean, not if if you're going there. No, I'm not getting scared by it. But I did enjoy it and like it, you know, for the scare factor in '85. Okay, John, but scary not, at all? not now. No, no. John. <laughs> when no. I was when I was younger, yeah, the gore would would affect me to a certain degree, and maybe some of the other stuff. But overall, no, no, this is. I was having a hard time staying awake for this. <laughs> Jesus. Larry? No. 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 This uh I don't think zombie films have ever scared me. I mean the jump scares got me when when I saw it the first time. You know, a jump yeah. scare is always gonna get you. Uh, that's the point of a jump scare. But as far as scaring me as a movie, a zombie I don't think you'll find a zombie film that actually scared me. Okay. I agree. It's uh I guess one of the one of the uh it, Best well lit horror movies ever. Yeah, like most of it takes place in like an almost like an officey setting. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's kind of hard. And there's again, there's not a lot going on. And then by the time you get to the overrunning of everything, to me, it's not so much scary as it is more of a gore yeah. factor. You know, more. Oh, gore it's, a, it's a total that, gore. That's factor. Yeah. that's what it is. But the gore, I give the gore. gore. I give the gore high, high marks. Yep. So I guess what we'll do on this one uh, is, you Larry, wanna, do you, you want to rate it? Yeah, let's give it a rating. What do you want to rate these on? Let's uh, let's let's rate. I think we should do a different rating for each. Okay, S- perfect. Scale of one to five. Day of the Dead. Bucket of Rhodes guts. <laughs> okay. All right. I <laughs> like that? that. I like that. Not bad. It's a bucket of chum. It's a bucket of Rhodes guts. <laughs> scale of one to five. All right. I'll go first. I'll I'll, I'll go first on this one. On a scale of one to five, Rhodes guts. <laughs> I'm going to give Don't choke on them. Day of the Dead 3.75. 3.75 Rhodes Guts. <laughs> wow, we're going with Are you with using quarters? Like that? You're yeah, using that bar yeah, stool pizza. Into those we, we started, we started again, going, right? well, it, it, it just makes more sense. Uh, 3.75. Now it makes more sense. <laughs> you killed me. <laughs> Nine shows we've done since we've changed this. You bring it up every time. Yes. I do. You were right. Because you were so angry about it the first time. Yeah, right, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's over, Johnny. Yeah, says the man um, who likes speed too. <laughs> I ha- I have a, a special like for this movie uh, since I went to see it on opening day in '85. Uh, I'm going to give it three and a half. Three and a half. All right. Uh, let's go to Larry. Yeah, yeah do me last. I want to do you last. Sure. Do me last. I'm gonna. Uh, it it is not my favorite uh, Romero zombie film. But it is still one that I love. Uh, it gets four buckets of Rhodes Guts. Four buckets of Rhodes Guts. John, what are we going to choke on with you? 
Well, I'm not going zero. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Only <laughs> adaptation in the pint movie invitation will yeah. ever earn that at this point. At this point so far, yeah. Leaving the Cube did not earn that. So. No. <laughs> what, what does that tell you? No, this, uh, it's it's low, though, because you guys are doing, what would you say? Three and a half for me. Three and a half for you. Three, three and three quarter. Out of five. No, I'll give it a solid two. Okay, two that, that's respectable on the Johnson scale. On the John scale, that's not bad at all. And, yeah, and honestly, bad. it's it's mostly based off of uh, the performances more than anything, because I actually like the performances, so there's that. <laughs> You'd like to take a ride on the Whirly Bird. The Whirly huh? Bird. I'd like to say, now that was a fucking Jamaican ass. That was, that was good. good. Okay. I'd like, I'd like to good. take a ride on Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, you know, the, the only thing with Sarah is Sarah was attractive, but there's no way any woman on earth could make her outfit look attractive. Oh, yeah. She wore some tight jeans. It was fine. Oh, she was like in these pleated dockers yeah, the whole they time. Like, was, they, they basically what said, do you want? they said, what are we going to do for wardrobe for Lori Cardiel? They said, yeah. like, send her to J.C. Penny. Z Cavarici jeans. Send her to J.C. Penny and, and send her to the fucking, the, there's a department called the least sexy department. <laughs> did, did they send her to J.C. Penny? Because honestly, uh, some of that looked like it came right out of Kmart. Yeah, but. it might have been Kmart. <laughs> All right, well, this has been the first episode <laughs> of, of Scary Larry's Pint of Horrors, and we just talked about Day of the Dead. And next up, well, who knows what's next up, because you guys are going to have to choose it. Department store But fashion. we will be talking about that pretty soon. Larry, thank you so much for bringing this movie oh, thank uh, you. as one of your 20 on. And uh, guys, uh, I don't know, either one of you, what do we say when we want to go away from Pine of Comics? Oh, Pine of Horrors. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, really, you say Pine of Horrors or something. That's there. right. What do we usually say? I don't know. What does Rhodes say? See ya! <laughs>